All right, this video is on raising exponential expressions to a to a power. Something say like x cubed squared. All right, so uh, the base for the three here is the x. We didn't understand that from before. But now the base for this exponent of two is all of this x to the third business. All right, so this exponent two here says to take the base of x cubed, and we know that we can rewrite that as x cubed times x cubed. And we say, all right, well, x cubed times x cubed is just x to the sixth from the previous video, the product rule of, of um, exponents. And so uh, x cubed raised to the second power goes to x to the sixth. It's the same expression. So let's try another one. What if we had, say, a squared to the fourth. Oops. To the fourth. Well, we can rewrite that as a squared times a squared times a squared times a squared. Say, so, all right, well, a squared times a squared times a squared times a squared is a to the eighth. Two plus two plus two plus two gives you eight. All right, so. That's the idea. So what's the relationship between what's going on over here on the left and the end result, right, over here and the end result? Well, these exponents here, the 3 and the 2, are being multiplied together to give you 6. And these exponents here, the 2 and the 4, are being multiplied together to give you the 8. And that's, that's really the idea for exponential expressions raised to powers, right? The note looks like this. M and N are just numbers, and so if you've got, um, you know, base raised to some exponent, and all of that's raised to another exponent, then uh, you multiply those two exponents together, keeping the original same base here. Okay, so let's look at some examples. All right, x to the fourth to the seventh. Well, we know that we can multiply the four and the seven together to give you x to the twenty-eighth. Right, just powers raised to more powers. Right, so then the next one. All right, notice here that the base uh, for the two is negative three, while the base for the five is negative three squared. All right, so this exponential expression is being raised to to an exponent, and so we multiply the two and the five together. So you have to keep the negative three. The negative three has to stay in parentheses, and two times five gives you ten. All right, because you negative three to the tenth. Make sense? All right, what about this one? All right, so now let's see. We could do something inside these parentheses here, right? Because we know that a to the third times a to the fourth is a to the seventh. All right, so just rewriting it, it looks like this. Notice you still need to keep those parentheses there because all we're doing is simplifying inside these parentheses, and whatever that goes to, we're raising it to the sixth power. That's why we have written it over here in this particular way. All right, so now we have a to the seventh, all of that raised to the sixth power, and so we can just do seven times six and get 42. So a to the 42 is what all this simplifies down to. And then what about, say, number four? All right, so the base for this three, this exponent three, the base is all of this x minus two thing. And so then the base for this seven is x minus two cubed, all of this is the base for the seven. So we have an exponential expression, all of this, raised to the seventh power, and so we multiply the three and the seven together to get 21. So this goes to x minus two to the 21st power. All right? Okay, so now I wanna try um, going backwards. All right, find values of a and b so that the following are true. All right, so we've got 4 to the 3n. We want to rewrite that as some number here to the n power. All right, well, 4 to the 3n we can rewrite as 4 to the 3rd, all of that raised to the n power. Remember, now we're just using that property that we had a minute ago. We're going backwards because we know that um, 4 to the 3rd all of that raised to the n, we know that's 4 to the 3n. So now we're just separating it up in a different way. All right, and then 
let's keep going here. And then 4 to the third is 64. All right. So this is 64 to the n equals a to the n. And now we've got this little n. We've got some number raised to the n power. Thus, a has to equal 64 in order for this statement up here to be true. All right? That makes sense. The, the point of this exercise is this part right here where we are rewriting 4 to the 3n as 4 to the 3rd, all of that raised to the n. Now going in the reverse direction from where we were going a minute ago. Okay, so now, looking at number 2 here, we have 4 to the 3n. And we want to rewrite that as a to some exponent b, and all of that raised to the third power. All right, so it's a little different than the one we had just a minute ago, because uh, this time we want the 3 uh, outside the parentheses here, instead of the n uh, as the outermost um, exponent. All right, so 4 to the 3n, well, we know we could do 4 to the 3n as 4 to the third all raised to the n, but we can also do 4 to the n raised to the third. Right? Everybody agree that 4 to the n raised to the third power is still going to give you 4 to the 3n? So this one expression, 4 to the 3n, can be rewritten a couple of different ways. 4 to the third, all of that raised to the n, or 4 to the n, all of that raised to the third power. And once, uh, since over here on number 2 we're trying to rewrite this so that 3 is outside the, the uh, parentheses there, the outermost exponent, now we can say, all right, uh, well, hold on, let's put this in, a to the b to the third. For this to be true, thus a has to equal 4, right, because a has to equal 4, and b, what does b need to be? Remember, we're trying to find the values for a and b. b has to equal n, right? So the point of these last two are, sh are to uh, emphasize that we can take um, this expression, an exponential expression, and possibly rewrite it as a uh, as an exponential expression raised to a power. Right? Make sense? All right. So then, go practice some more. That's it for now. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.